Is, is all of your group here that's coming? So tonight we have a work session with the um, our CAPS committee. Um, Daryl and uh, and Debbie are here, so welcome. And we are formally presenting the Crosswalk Initiative to you guys. Um, we I think we brought it forth to you in July just as a an idea, and we've um, gelled it a little bit more, and um, really hope to roll it out come April. Is, I forgot to put that in here, but um, uh, what we've been researching and understanding is that a lot of communities are doing this to bring safety and um, awareness to crosswalks and also bring community in as well. A lot of them involve uh, uh, groups like the Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts and things like that eventually. Um, but our initial rollout, we just want to um, have it be the CAPS committee and we've chosen three locations, and I'll walk you through that. Um, um, and the reason we want to do that is so we can figure out the pitfalls, the ups and downs, what it takes to, you know, cost of the initiative, how much time it takes, how much staff time it takes, and things like that before we involve the community and put them literally in harm's way in a street painting um, crosswalks. <coughs> so. Um, this is, uh, Denver has a, a pretty uh, extensive program and people apply to do it. Um, and, and this information is sort of based off of that. We have the goal, the guidelines, the requirements, and then um, the materials and installation. So um, this would be the, the actual uh, form eventually that we would have um, applicants if they're adopting a crosswalk work from. Does anybody need her to read that? Because it was hard. <laughs> oh, is it hard? Uh, sorry, I can't. Can I go backwards? Yep. Oh, no, I can't. Um, oh, oh I well, we reviewed it. I reviewed it. I reviewed it on the packet. So some people yeah, I don't have. need to okay. have you read it. Um, yeah, and so this. Uh, is an example of a town in Massachusetts that they um, all got together, created designs, and then worked one weekend to uh, paint the crosswalks. Our crosswalks are not the, uh, I forget what they're called, they're vertical lines. Um, so one of the things we decided um, is to, hang on, is to work within the, you know, we have these horizontal lines, and so we want to do the design so that they work within what's existing out there, so that we're not undoing all the work that's just been done, because they, a lot of the crosswalks have just been freshly painted. Um, and we want to work with some, some form of template. We haven't come up with a design yet, but templates um, make it a little more uniform and are easier to accomplished then you, as you saw the hand painting could take a, a good bit of time to do well then the templates would also be approved you know, go through the process of are they appropriate um, and then if it an organization wants to step in um, and do something a little bit different then they're able to actually do their own template and then go to the board for approval that type of thing so Oh, and it helps with ongoing maintenance, too, mm -hmm. because um, uh, I found out they paint the crosswalks about once a year with regular paint and three times a year with the special, um, I, I can't remember the terminology, but there's a, it's got adhesive in it. Um, so how long do you anticipate one of the hand-painted the, the, like the waves in that, how long does that last? I, I would think if it's hand painted, you know, it depends probably on where it is and how much traffic is going over it, but it should last about a year. Um, um, the, do you want to talk about the locations? Yes, we chose initially three that the CAPS committee would 
do to kind of experiment and uh, see how it went and, and all the different details on it. But the three that we have chosen, um, there is one on by Sagamore on 75th and uh, 76th. Yeah, Sycamore and 76th. So you see it going, that would be like almost going like West Founders Park is over to the left. Um, and that's, uh, that's really busy there. It gets a lot of walkers and it, get a little, it has a lot of traffic of people just going down 76th. And so um, we thought that would be a good place to start. And it's, and it's sort of, and we chose three different areas of Superior. So we can kind of have people in three different communities see what they look like. Um, the second one is right by South Pool. So the South Pool is right behind us. You see the bicyclist, so it's right behind us. So we would do these over by South Pool. Oh, sorry, Rowan. And then the last one over by North Pool. So we're getting three different areas of Superior to, so that we kind of see what this looks like and practice on how it's going to work. Um, and when I was actually out taking these photographs, um, Jerry Malia was out doing his crosswalk duty, and he said the kids mostly, if we wanted to limit it, this crosswalk and that crosswalk are the primary ones, so we could paint those to be the, um, the focus um, if, if we wanted to do something like that to draw attention to the crosswalks we want the kids to use and, and the best places to cross. Um, and the uh, other thing about 76, we've heard a lot of comments about the bus that stops right up here. And we were hoping that the crosswalk would draw attention not only to the bus, but the crosswalk. Um, it's so wide there that people often go right by the bus and speed mm -hmm. on by it. And so this was um, one of the primary reasons we thought this location would be really great for the um, initial crosswalk painting. And then um, and then um, we were thinking that um, once we did our initial three that we would do this adopt a crosswalk program <coughs> and then it would allow us to identify specific crosswalks in town. Um, we would work with public works and make sure that they were okay ones and then clubs and schools and businesses could adopt a crosswalk and they could either have our group paint them or they could choose to paint them themselves and we would work with Public Works and make sure based on what we had learned that it was a safe and um, uh, proper location for that. And I think that's, that's pretty much it that we have. Questions? Do you have any sort of an idea of what it's going to cost? Um, you know, I did some initial research and in like that big traffic marking paint, like a five gallon jug of paint, is about $80. <coughs> if I went and bought it off the internet, I don't know if the town has other ways of purchasing it. But then I saw the spray paint, which I thought was really cool, and like 12 cans of spray paint was, you know, $100. And if we start out with the crosswalks that are, you know, existing like this, then we don't have to go through that process of churning up the asphalt and that type of thing. Because originally we were thinking we would need to do that, but we don't have to do that now if we use the existing crosswalks that they just did, which that was actually kind of the biggest cost. So we won't need to incur that cost if we don't do that. So. And the other cost um, could potentially be um, safety, whether mm -hmm. we need to hire somebody to block traffic while it's actually happening, or if we can manage to, you know, get cones and, and or even like a, a town of superior truck or something that would be at that location when we were doing it. Do we know how long these take to dry? How long would traffic have to be detoured? Oh, that's a good question. I think we wasn't that like within four hours? I think that Martin when we talked about it, I think that I think that paint dries within four hours. Assuming you know it's over a certain temperature and that type of thing, it was actually surprisingly less time than I thought it would, you know, it would be. And of course, that would be dry, dry. You know how when they sometimes do the crosswalks and they don't keep the cones up long enough or whatever, and then people <laughs> drive over them and it's like a mess. So uh, the four hours I think was almost like complete drying time. So maybe that could be a little bit, <coughs> a little bit. I suggest time. complete drying time. Well, I would yes. prefer well, absolutely. Right. You're, you're going to have these really interesting designs, and so you don't want people driving over them before they're 
completely dry. So did you say you'd have to repaint them <clears throat> three times during the year? No. 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 Okay. No. Well, the, that's um, what I wasn't sure if that's what I. Cause no, I was the like, three Whoa. was there is a there's the the paint that's sort of rubberized that that they do every three years. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, okay, that's where I missed it. Yeah. Okay. And I don't know, I this this paint that I've done the research on and the pricing out is just regular street marking paint. It's not the rubber eyes. So um, I, I actually don't think I even found that. I don't know if, like, I could go and buy that personally. And these first three, you said you, would you ask for uh, ideas or are you, the CAPS committee going to? determine the first designs we'll come up with the first three designs that's good okay it would be interesting to uh, reach out to the communities that have done these sorts of crosswalks in the past to see kind of what their experience has been in terms of how long the crosswalks have lasted what types of paints they actually used if they had you know some success with certain brands versus others yeah, and absolutely, we can we can do some of that research. We don't want to roll this out until April. We don't have a design, but we want to get your approval so that we can take the time to go in and do more extensive research in that regard, for sure. I mean, um, when I was looking online, uh, almost every major city, it seems like now, is doing some sort of program. And some of them, it's not just the crosswalks, it's the full intersection. Like, they're going to town and doing intersections and... Um, really trying to draw awareness to areas where where pedestrians are and their potential conflicts and um, making making it a little bit safer for people. There's if you're going to the Lewisville Rec Center, they have one right in front of there. From the parking lot into the Lewisville Rec Center, they have one of these painted crosswalks. And when I talked to them a couple of weeks ago, they said they were very surprised at how long the paint actually lasted on it now it's not a street you know so how you how you would judge whether or not um, it would last one year in front of the Louisville Rec Center or five years in front of the Louisville Rec Center but on 76 that might only last a year kind of thing so I think that traffic kind of fits in but she said they had not touched up or painted it in quite a while so and it, and it still looks really good so well and that's the nice thing about having a template too is that it's pretty easy to go back with a template mm -hmm. and and touch up and fix if it's really um, not lasting. So so what are your ideas in ter terms of how you'd go about soliciting designs and, and things like that? Well, we have a lot of creative minds on the CAPS committee, so I think initially we would, we would use that as our resource and then run it by you guys in terms of look. I mean, th this, <coughs> this one we all, I mean, we don't have water in our community, but we all like that. It, it was um, relatively simple, but but pretty effective. Um, so the idea is well, to, to do it in house and not to go you know, hire somebody else. I don't to think so. Design, I don't think. Like that. I don't think. Um, and the one that was on the initial screen that was also had the this one. No, way back in the beginning. Uh oh, yeah. Okay, because that's another example of how you have the existing crosswalks already there and then you're painting around them so you don't have to redo the, the crosswalks on it. Um, but you might talk more about um, why schools might be interested in participating. Like our neighborhood, because in Colquitt Crossing, that from our neighborhood over to Founders Park, we would do, the neighborhood would do it, the community would do it and you know obviously um, a, have a design that's ready that we liked and bring it to the board, have it approved and then each neighborhood would would do the crosswalk in, as a part of their community. Mm -hmm. Boy Scouts could do the same thing. Um, the swim team, you know, Rock Creek Flyers could do it. So once we've fish. once we've experimented with this, then um, we'll have a comfort level. This works, and this is how the process has gone. And then we can take it out to the schools and businesses. And actually, even part of the idea was to generate additional funds so that a business may want to have, and I know that in Denver, on that form, they can't, there's, there's all these guidelines, they can't have, you can't have logos, you can't have any of this kind of stuff on it, but you may have a business that is willing to do a crosswalk, for instance, or an elementary school, that you have a whole program on safety and, and um, you know, this type of thing that goes along with the art on the painting of the crosswalk, so. 
Well, and I think with this school, like we have the second graders come down here and they tour the historic thing. It could be a fourth grade project. You know, the fourth graders every year get to come up with the design that is the crosswalk in front of Superior Elementary or something like that. It would be nice to have. I know that the art teacher up there is a muralist, and um, I'm sure ideas are churning in their, you know, if we brought this to them, I'm sure they could come up with some fabulous ideas for um, great, great crosswalk art. I think the only comment I would make on the three intersections that you selected, <coughs> two of them make incredible sense to me because they're very, very public streets. This one makes total sense to me. The second one makes total sense to me because, or the third one makes total sense to me because it's near India on Indiana, which is a, ma a major street. Um, my only concern is the one that's at the South Pool. Um, I'm not sure that that's the busiest street to get the best exposure. Um, my thought would be to, to do a street that's closer to the school as opposed to, now I think there are certainly families who go to the pool would see it, but I, I would, my only comment would be is to maybe do a more public street, maybe something on the, um, on Indiana closer to the school. Yeah, you didn't want to do the so school first. per se? But because we wanted the schools to have that opportunity, but you're right. I'm thinking maybe Indiana and a little bit further up. Um, is it um, as close the the intersection before you get to McCaslin? Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. That uh, that we were trying like to get might be a every area of town. Right. Um, and, and again, the ones by the schools. We're hoping that that in April that these work really well. Then it will go on to the schools. So therefore, El Dorado K eight they would create, design, implement by El Dorado K-8, as would they by Superior Elementary. We just kind of wanted three different areas, in the three different areas of town where we could experiment with it, basically, then roll it out to the schools and organizations and that type of thing. So that, that's, that's is. You could do um, one on Rock Creek Parkway, further south, mm -hmm. towards Colton, you know. Mm -hmm. Right. And that, that's close enough. You know, and, I, mean, and I live in this end of town, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and I don't drive up that street very. There's streets that I think no. are more commonly traversed by people, so that that would be my only. That's comment. A, it's a it's a good comment, and right. I think this could be a good one for a group to do, mm -hmm. and then that you know it's a much safer street to paint. <laughs> yes. So it was kind of just really starting in baby steps, and then to see. How and I'm not opposed to this. I just oh no no no, it's a great suggestion. Yeah, we were it's a good we. Suggestion. we yeah, and, and the schools are really logical, but we want to avoid doing those right now because we want the schools to be able to have the opportunity to um, to take ownership of, of that street in that area. Good, yeah. exciting, yeah. exciting ideas. And I'm looking forward to the one by the North Pool. I get to see that every day. <laughs> That's cool, yeah. I think this is a fantastic idea. I think it's going to be great. And if you guys were going to do the North Pool, would you do all four sides, or do you think you'd just do the one, the two sides that the kids mostly cross on, all four sides? I'd do all four sides, because I see kids crossing on the, go, going home. I don't know about the morning, but I'm seeing going home on this one on the right mm -hmm. side over there. Okay. I see a lot of kids and parents crossing on that side. I don't know about the morning, but I would do all four, or at least those three. Th this one and then the other two at least yeah because all four sides have a striping uh, on them already I mean already all, yeah it yeah. would be kind of interesting to think about a design that kind of incorporates four sides of something you know too that would might be kind of interesting well, well some of the things we've seen that are really cool are instruments and that would, you know um, piano keys are really mm -hmm. easy to do um, guitar strings you could run through there I mean there 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 are so many ideas that other towns and areas have incorporated this it's just, it's amazing mm -hmm. so that the lack of designs is not an issue the right. only other comment I would make on it is think hard about when you do it because of snow plows um, the summit at Rock Creek painted one year we painted our sidewalks in April and then we got two snows and the uh -huh. snow plows destroyed it so you might want to think May would you know after Mother's Day you know the the old flower, but you might want to think about that so that they don't get scraped up 
True, um, especially if they're a primary yeah. plow route. Well, so, and, and it has to have enough sun. It has to be yeah. over a certain, just like any type of paint, over a, you know a certain temperature yeah. before you can paint. I mean, there's a lot of guidelines with that type of thing right. that is yeah. involved, actually. So, Matt, what are your thoughts? I like it. I, I think it's a good program. I mean, I think the suggestions the board has made as far as timing and and locations all make sense to me. Um, and traffic control, I think Public Works, you know, will help with that. We'll need to make sure that it's safe when you get when you have people out there doing this. So we'll work with the committee members on that. And yeah, and and the, we can get the paint. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, so I, I think it's a good program. Uh, the question on timing for when do you think you'll have designs to we bring have to back? We get through the roundabout selection. <laughs> <first>. <laughs> yes. Okay. You're busy with that. I got you. Um, <laughs> on more ways than one, you have to be able to get through the around the roundabout. <laughs> yes. Good point. Um, so sometime after the first of the year. Yeah, absolutely that. after the first of the year, because yeah. we really thought April and Sandy, to Sandy's point, you know, between April and May, looking at snowstorms and things like that, weather-wise and. Right. Whatnot, um, yeah. But we is do. it appropriate if we're done with this? Can they just give an update of the meeting on the roundabout art? Sure. Yeah. You've got thirty-five more minutes. Feel like they're <laughs> <laughs> up to that? Yeah. That's Anybody what would you, you like want to that? Know? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Tell um, us about your meeting last week. Well, yeah, we we're pretty excited. The um, Applicate or the RFP closed on October 2nd at 4 o'clock, and we had 122 um, responses. And it took us three and a half hours with literally, I mean, we just we flashed through we their flashed concepts. We flashed through them all, and it, you know, I mean, we had voting sheets, and it, you know, so we individually voted, and then the committee member individually voted. And then we tallied up every vote, so it was like 30 seconds to look and vote. There, I mean, it, it took us like three and a half hours to go through all the submissions. Um, and then, of course, all those vote tallies uh, were put together. And to a large extent, we're meeting Thursday night again to go through the ones that were uh, the highest priority ones, the ones that we all like the best. And so we're meeting essentially every Thursday until we come up with the announcement. So. Well, we, uh, but before we bring the ones for them to decide. Oh, absolutely, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there, there's actually a lot of work in, in seeing at, when you had 122 submissions and how long it took us to go through them, um, it's gonna be a process to really look at them all and discuss them and that type of thing. And bring in all the different artists and it's wonderful, and considering I remember when you first set it out, you were worried, or not worried, but there was some question about how many submissions, and uh, it just it's just great. I think that a well-designed RFP uh, request for submissions, and then also the fact that it's a nice, healthy sum for an artist and a great prominent Oh, it's a signature position. Piece. It's a signature yes. piece, so it's 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 great that you got that many. Somebody had the brilliant idea on the committee of wh when Matt authorized that the committee could actually, with his blessing, wade through all 122 and try to do something with it, rather than having staff take the first crack. Somebody came up with this idea of a lightning round, and that's Which is what we did. I sat in the back of the room and watch this unfold, um, but that's what they did. They each got a minute. So it maximum, minimum took 122 minutes, and then somebody would say yes, no, maybe. So yes, no, maybe. So now they're gonna have to figure out what to look at. I assume the yeses and the maybes are still in it, but the goal was really to whip through them and let your instincts sort of judge. With no discussion, by the way, right? And that was the whole point. That that if I was sitting next to someone, I, my I would not influence anyone else in their their opinion and their judging. So there was no discussion. It was literally just yes, no, or maybe. Um, and a lot of them that maybe would not have been a yes is a possible for other locations also. 
because it might not have been large enough, for instance, but we liked it. So therefore, it would go on to another location. So. How many uh, submittals do you, does CAPS intend to bring to the board in terms of you know, finalists? And are you going to be making a recommendation as to anyone in particular? Or? I was thinking five, but it's hard to know. You know, if there's well, ballpark, ten yeah. of them that are fabulous, then that would be. I mean, what we have our and what we look through our concept plans that they put forth for the actual roundabout. And in some cases, it was an existing piece that they had done that they sort of modified. In other cases, people really researched and gave us a unique piece for there. Um, so it's going through through looking at their concepts and then also looking at what they've created as public art in other places and and getting some understanding of of what they gave us what they've created and how that can be a final piece so there's some tweaking that will probably happen before we present to you guys the the finalists well i'm, I'm glad to hear that because I, I certainly wouldn't want caps to arbitrarily say like okay we've got to s just bring five you know Whatever you think deserves the board's attention, please bring it to us and, and let's talk about it because this is an important piece of art and obviously well, you care about it, the board cares about it. And, uh, and we're not even letting, the, so the yes and no's and maybes, we're going to have a smaller group go through the maybes and the no's mm -hmm. because maybe there was somebody there that's created something but their concept plan did not ring true to us. So, but they're a fabulous um, artist. So we, wa we want to go through those and not... Um, completely discount them. We want to give them a second chance, essentially. And if there really is merit for them to be brought forth, we'll judge them again and and see where they come up in the in the process. Because um, one of the things that that Matt did do, where we were cautious about, is we only looked at actual submissions and voted on them. But then there may have been an artist who submitted, um, but didn't actually have whatever the concept the plan. actual concept plan but then now we're able to go back and look at their basically you know their portfolios and and look at their different pieces of work and make decisions on that and then reach out to them because they did go ahead and submit by that deadline so now we can actually feel comfortable looking at their other portfolio pieces so that's what we have to start on this I just comment that <coughs> This sounds, the process you guys are using sounds great. It sounds a lot like an admissions process for a university, uh -huh. right? Where yes, you, yeah. you wouldn't want the best looking applications, the most complete applications to be the only students that you admitted. Sometimes those applications need a closer look to make sure you uh, get the right uh, type of student. And getting so kudos to you I was a little worried when you said there were the yeses and the noes and the maybes so I like the <laughs> fact that the the maybes and the noes aren't necessarily fully excluded that somebody might be giving them a, a closer look so really great yeah. throw. And, and I think a lot of that had to do with we were really trying to stay within those guidelines of the RFP when it was submitted and made sure we were meeting those guidelines and now we can start on you know once a week going through and with a little bit more leeway to look again Great. So. And, and, and Katie organized um, all of the um, Cafe Press folks, so we have all of their applications in um, print form, so we can look through the print, we can look at it online, and then also we had a lot of people mail in submissions and, um, and hand deliver them, and those have also been organized and, and um, are ready to go through yeah. as well. Do you have an approximate breakdown of Colorado artists versus nationwide? There were a lot of, um, there were quite a few. Um, Colorado? I think the yes. process is important to discuss, but as a uh, guy that runs a lot of public RFPs, I think getting into detail in terms of the num even number of respondents or type of respondents or type, this feels like we were up until process until that last one. So it just feels like if, if one of the respondents was watching this video tonight and felt like he was being disadvantaged because he was out of state. Oh, so. no, we, yeah. we yeah. didn't even, we weren't we looking at any know. of that. There was none of that information. We knew nothing. I mean, um, it was literally, here it is. This is the concept. Yes, no, maybe. 
so that we don't we weren't yeah, didn't say there was no bias towards oh this person you know lives in Boulder for instance but but so as a fact there were there a were. number of which was you know I, I actually thought that was nice to see that there were a number of Colorado artists that did um, but that's not going to influence our decision mm -hmm. and I don't even know if they're in, I can't even I have no idea if they were in the top 20 yeah. we don't know yet I trust you all to be able to do it well because you're all very talented and the committee is fantabulous. <laughs> and uh, the, we my, do have a really good team. Yeah, I agree, the team is great. Uh, and I would just remind uh, staff to make sure that we press forward with getting that paid through TIF. Yeah, the, the, this public art is paid for through TIF. And make sure we, I'm, I'm saying it in too directorial, but. We don't want to have the same kind of problem of when we get down to putting the art up that we don't know where the money is going to come from from the developer. Thank you. The um, tangential benefits of this um, were alluded to, but with 122, we have just created a great uh, bank mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. talent for future projects, and then. Um, I'm sure down the road the, uh, the committee will share with you some that were not suitable for a roundabout, but were really innovative for placement elsewhere, um, you know, as we grow art throughout the community. So that was really fun to see, too. Yeah, absolutely. And then some were just complete. We did have, by the what way, the were whole they thinking CAPS cascades? committee was there in the voting process. So we were all, it wasn't just three or four, it was the whole committee was there voting. Yeah, no, it was a, uh, um, and, and we were going to try to not do names, but there was no way to go through Cafe Press without seeing names, so we actually had to um, call up stuff by name. That was just by nature of the way that it was designed, Cafe Press was designed and the way the images were downloaded. So how long do you think this process is going to take to actually get to the board's recommendations stage? Um, I don't have the, I wasn't prepared. Um, but there's a November deadline, I think, we that we that to you. Um, are letting the artists know. So we have to let you guys, I mean, there, I, I forgot. Do you know? <laughs> Sorry. Was it November 2nd or November 5th that we bring it before the board with uh, the? It's the first meeting in December. Was it first meeting in December? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So well, thank you for. Thank you for doing all this hard work. Yeah, no, it's Appreciate fun it. hard work. It's fun <laughs> hard work. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Anything else during your work session? Okay, we'll be back at seven.
Good evening. I'd like to call to order the regular meeting of the Town of Superior Board of Trustees for Monday, October 9th, 2017. Could we all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? Phyllis, can we have the roll call, please? Mayor Clint Fossum. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Sandy Pennington. Here. Trustees Rita Dozell. Here. Sandy Hammerger. Here. Chris Hansen. Mark Laces. Here. Kevin Ryan. Here. Town Manager Matt Magley. Here. Town Attorney Kendra Carberry. Here. Town Clerk Phyllis Harden. Here. All right, next is the approval of the agenda. Do we have any items on the agenda we'd like to pull from the consent or change on the agenda? I'll move motion. to approve the agenda. Okay, motion by Trustee Laces. Second. Second by Trustee Ryan. All those in favor? Right. Passes unanimous. All right, next is reports, questions, and issues. Who'd like to go first? Okay. Yeah. Um, evening. I have two comments this evening. First, I had the opportunity to attend the Jefferson Parkway public session on September 27th. Like a lot of members of the community, I've been watching the Jefferson Parkway from the sidelines. I'm glad I got closer by attending the public session and would implore others from the community to do the same. My thoughts after attending the session and as reported at that session in the public comments are as follows. Future generations will look back at what we're doing with the Jefferson Parkway with sadness and confusion. We're building the parkway as if fossil fuels will never end and people will continue being the solo occupants in their oversized SUVs. There's no, account, there's no consideration for public transportation or the future of autonomous vehicles. Second, a reference to the Public Highway Authority Act of 1987 was made and was even addressed in the handout. In the handout, on a slide, it says that the Jefferson uh, Parkway Highway Authority has the ability to do, quote, everything necessary. That just isn't true. There are a number of limiting factors detailed in that act that the community can engage in. So much of what we heard was trust us. Trust us that the environmental studies that we see are sa that demonstrate that that land is safe are different than the environmental studies that you see indicating that the land may not be safe. Trust us, they say. When you misrepresent an act 30 years ago, it's challenging for me personally to trust that authority. Third, the Jefferson Parkway was formed through a public act, yet is distancing itself from government regulations, for example, by not doing a NEPA. That is disingenuous. Finally, they referenced repeatedly a partnership with other towns, but the towns that this highway is going to dump traffic into, Superior, uh, Boulder, Golden, are not represented on that highway authority, nor do we want to be represented with the highway authority that is trying to build the Jefferson Parkway. As neighbors, I plan on getting involved and would ask that you do the same. Second, I attended the first Fridays uh, last Friday. Um, unusual excitement for a first Friday coffee session. Uh, we had hundreds, perhaps thousands of hockey players. It was at Sticks, the new uh, coffee shop in, uh, across the street there. Hundreds, if not thousands, of hockey players who came in to play the Silver Sticks uh, tournament. Through a series of unfortunate events, we were paving the road in front of the sports stable, which significantly restricted uh, access and parking. And by we, I mean the developer. Um, I'd like to publicly thank the Omni Interlochen Resort for lending us a very large golf cart that we used to shuttle players and spectators uh, to and from the remote parking lots. This was especially important since the handicap spot was a couple hundred yards away. There were two handicap spots, but they were a couple hundred, hundred yards away from the entrance. Uh, and of course, I'd like to thank town staff who stepped away from uh, their uh, very busy day and facilitated the transportation of the golf cart loan on almost no notice. So thanks, Matt and team, and thanks again for the Omni Interlock and Resort for doing that. Thanks, Rita. I'll start backwards and go forward. I, too, attended the first Friday coffee and was very distressed to see the mess that was happening over in the town center. It's not our mess, 
but our staff actually came and and fixed it or tried to fix it and actually improved the situation greatly. So I thank staff too for showing up right away as soon as we called at 7.30 in the morning and said there was a terrible problem going on over here. Not only was the roundabout half closed, but so were streets within the town center and you know everything was just way up in the air. Um, also, I um, participated in um, uh, last week in interviewing for candidates and to select a new executive director for Dr. Cog, which is the Denver Regional Council of Government. This is an important organization that we're part of that we can get federal funding through. And um, the new executive director will be very exciting because we had the same one for several years and it was time for a new one. Uh, attended the Boulder County Open Space, or Boulder County Open Space, Boulder County uh, Affordable Housing Summit uh, last Friday, a week ago Friday. And uh, that was very interesting in meeting with other Boulder County uh, uh, communities and organizations to talk about the situation for affordable housing here in Boulder County. Uh, participated in two town budget reviews, and I also participated in two second grade historical and, and local government tours, and that's what a joy, what fun, but also it takes a lot of energy, and this older person keeping up with second graders is really <laughs> more than I ever imagined, but it was really a great time, and I re really appreciated participating in that. Thank you. Thanks. Sandy? Um, I was at all of those, <laughs> and you were at what I'm going to just say, but you forgot to say it. So a I retreat. We, um, oh, yeah, we all participated in a retreat as well on Friday, and uh, of course there's a, a video of that, and uh, the entire community can uh, observe that. Um, and uh, uh, individually, I. Um, uh, participated in the Cultural Arts and Public Spaces Committee meeting on, uh, actually it was an off meeting. Uh, we received 122 uh, responses to our proposal for uh, the treatment of the roundabout, the, uh, whatever sculptural artistic treatment at the roundabout. So compliments to that group. They, they met uh, last Thursday and intend to meet every Thursday until a decision is made, uh, which of those 122 artists rises to the top. So excellent results and a lot of hard work went into it so far and there will be a lot of hard work yet to be done. Um, uh, attended a consortium of cities meeting last week. That was a follow up to the Boulder County Affordable Housing Summit. Uh, this is an interesting discussion for the town of Superior because we've sort of taken the tack up here that we are the affordable housing in Boulder County. So it's interesting to have our eyes open to, uh, you know, the huge need uh, for even more affordable housing. And so we as a town will be discussing um, going forth what role, if any, the town of Superior can play in that. But it was an eye-opening uh, conversation to have. And um, that's about it. I think the rest has been mentioned. Okay, thanks, Mark. No report. All right, Sandy. Um, I also attended most of the meetings that were mentioned, and I did want to make um, a couple of comments. Um, at the Boulder County Affordable Housing Summit, one of the things that we were asked to do as a com um, each of our cities was asked to do was to adopt a resolution um, that was worded by, that was recommended by um, the planning group. And they're asking all communities to do it regarding affordable housing. And it's supposed to be done by January. I would like to make sure that we have a discussion about that as a board. <laughs> Uh, prior to January, um, the the recommendation was sort of eh, lukewarm. I'd really like to have us have a discussion and, and what it means to us as a community so that it's a little more than the sort of lukewarm um, document. Uh, the I also attended the Jefferson County Parkway meeting. Um, I really echo what Kevin said. Um, we all need to be concerned about the Jefferson County Parkway. Um, that traffic, uh, they may believe that that traffic is going to just go between Arvada and uh, Broomfield, 
but the reality is folks the people coming out of Arvada and Lakewood and stuff are going to jump on that road and they're going to come down McCaslin Boulevard and they're going to come down Highway 93 so it could have a very severe impact when a four to six lane road then jump dumps on to little old McCaslin so I really think we all need to pay attention to what's happening there um, the Commission's already spent nine million dollars just on the efforts to make that road happen and um, we do not want to let it happen without um, our community having a voice um, I participated in the um, 2018 budget review meetings um, as somebody who handles financials I know most people it's not fun but it's always fun for me and um, I really want to um, commend uh, Paul Nellis and his team on really putting together great materials for us because they they really are well done and um, help us make decisions um, I participated in the town retreat um, on Monday a week ago and we are working on our priorities for 2018 um, I would like to see among our priorities be concerns with the Jefferson Parkway and I would also like to make sure that um, we come up with some focus for what we're going to do with civic, civic and recreation space in the Superior Town Center. Um, if anyone has any ideas for things that they think the town should focus on in 2018, um, I'd love to hear from you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. On the 29th of September, I hosted the uh, El Dorado second graders here for the final of three second grade field trips. Uh, we had. Um, I want to thank the Historical Commission uh, for the amount of time and, and Trustee Dozell and others for volunteering their time for that uh, event. It's just always great to have youngsters in town hall and, and around town. I think they learn a whole lot and it's a, just a very memorable field trip. And appreciate the Daily Camera for covering the event as well. I've got, uh, got some nice coverage on that, so appreciate that. On the 4th, I attended uh, Metro Mayor's full caucus meeting in Denver. And then today, I participated in the Metro Mayor's Transportation Committee um, conference call. A couple of upcoming reminders. Next month, we will only have, we will have two meetings next month. It's November. Sometimes the uh, second meeting falls on Thanksgiving week, and we don't have it. But this time, it falls after Thanksgiving week. So we will have two meetings in November, but just one meeting in December. So that's it for my announcements. Uh, Matt? Yeah, uh, just wanted to thank uh, Trustee Ryan for helping us coordinate, get that golf cart on Friday. It, it worked out really well. And for my staff's work and, and helping out that situation and everyone else that helped out. There's <laughs> everybody dropped everything and went over, so appreciate that. I, I don't have anything. Thank Thanks. you. Phyllis. Okay. All right, now we're on to public comment and welcome everyone for coming tonight. It's great to see a full house, although no one has taken the featured three front chairs here, so <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure why they're they're still available. All right, if you'd like to speak at public comment, just give a little wave, and I'll signal you to come up. So, yes, sir. Good evening, all. Uh, I will again introduce myself, Bill Simmons. I'm the president of the Coal Creek Crossing Homeowners Association. Our, um, I, I'll call it our newest community and still finishing community, and that's why I've come before you in the past to introduce myself and to leave with my promise that I would keep you updated. And so that's what I have now is is an update and and um, a request for your help. So we now have a completed community in terms of all our homes have closed. We have homes that have been there for over two years now and uh, our latest within just the past few months. And at this point, we have um, overwhelmingly most of us who are happy with our community, happy with our neighbors, but also very troubled by ongoing need for drainage and grounds issues to be finished by our builder. Um, we have worked um, diligently and patiently uh, with Remington and they have been very forthcoming with us too. Uh, and that is one of the reasons that we've been uh, surprised by um, still having grounds problems, native grasses that haven't grown in spite of a second seeding now, and um, drainage issues that through the summer, um, for some of our homes even that have been there for two years, have involved um, 
mosquito um, pools in areas that have been so wet that it hasn't been possible to mow without churning up mud. And um, so we are going to maintain confidence that our builder is going to continue to work with us as they have said that they would. And in the meantime, in the Trust But Verify Department, we're going to come to you as well for, for help. Um, we have quite a few of us who are here today, and I'm going to ask if you would kindly stand if you are from our Coal Creek Crossing Association. <laughs> <laughs> Goodness. Maybe have those uh, not stand. <laughs> I think that's everyone. Welcome. So why do we have such a turnout? And, and I think we do, of course, because we have so many people who are concerned, but also because we have so many who have the confidence that your knowledge of, our, uh, of how troubled we are, but also your knowledge of our needs for these changes will be a catalyst for helping to make sure that they will occur. Uh, our Homeowners Association engaged with the architectural design firm who actually designed Founders Park, design concepts, and they are highly reputed. They were so professional and so good with us, and they completed a report of our drainage and grounds, and they had, um, they had quite a few recommendations. Uh, our, su our superior um, parks and rec director, Mr. Hammer, has been really good in, in working with me and, and with Scott Grum. And uh, actually, we had a over, well over an hour conversation today. And in the your mission, should you choose to accept it department, I think mm -hmm. he is the one who is going to be a big part of our catalyst. And I think other staff that we will hope to recruit with Mr. Magley's permission to. And so um, an example, at risk of erring on the side of the dramatic, um, one of the recommendations of the design concepts report has been that our grounds in preparation of native grasses should be ideally down to one inch rocks. I grabbed this one on my way over. And most of them, of course, are not this big, but it was not that difficult. <laughs> it was not that difficult to find it, even in the snow. And so part of where we're going is, is our really appreciative, our grateful dependence upon uh, the expertise that we have in our town staff. And that's where we are going to finalize our timeline. Um, so Mr. Hammer has already, within the past week, met with for a walkthrough with Remington. And we will look forward to keeping up that influence because our goals are all the same. To finish, to make sure that the issues that we have are clarified and, and addressed. And then Remington is able to move on. But to make sure that it happens in an order and that it all happens. So I'm going to thank you all again for your interest. And I'm going to thank Ms. Dozal and Ms. Pennington for coming out just three days ago also to, uh, to walk the grounds with us. And out of their interest to make sure that what happens in our community is really what's going to be a reflection of what our community needs to be. And so again, thank you very much. Thanks for all of those who have come to and, and shown our support for our staff and council. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Additional public uh, comment. Okay, so the, my name is Scott Grum, I live at 213 8th Avenue. I'm the treasurer for the HOA. And one of the things we're doing is just trying to make sure that everything is finished according to the plan so that the community or the town does not end up with any bills that aren't appropriate for them. So one thing we're battling with is the water bill. So Remington Homes gave us a bill for July and August and said, you guys are going to pay this. Um, there was no communications and no handoff that includes late fees. So we're trying to work with the town staff um, in the billing department rather than just saying, here's a bill, someone else go pay it. But you know, the, our bylaws say we can't pay anything related to construction costs. So 
since just Saturday, they were out installing sprinklers and haven't turned them on yet and haven't tested them. And to this day, we still don't have any access to the sprinkler control box, can't install a rain sensor so sprinklers don't come on in rainstorms, can't turn water off when it's leaking, or can't adjust sprinklers so we're not overwatering and wasting water, or watering what appears to be dirt and weeds in all these native grass areas. We're wasting a bunch of water and that the builder is asking the HOA to pay for it. And we don't want that to happen, so we're continuing to work with on the town staff on that. And we hope that Patrick will help us go through the evaluation report and hold the builder responsible for what they're supposed to do. Because we don't want builders coming into either our community or other communities that are built in Superior and walking out without finishing what they agreed to and leaving people in Superior with the bill. So thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, um, additional public comment. <laughs> yes. There we go. We've got to take her now in the front row. Gladys 4404 South 3rd Avenue, original town. Um, in November of 2001, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, November 2001, the citizens passed a sales tax, 0.3% for acquisition and maintenance of open space. There has been no town election since November 2001 to amend OSAC or anything regarding ProStack. OSAC cannot be dissolved due to the tax vote, November 2001, without voter approval. And you have that on your agenda tonight to, dis um, to dissolve that. That's not possible. ProStack cannot be merged with OSAC taxation without voters' approval. Here again, back to the November 2001 election. So this resolution that you're working tonight is illegal because nothing has come to a vote of the people. Additional public comment? Anyone else? Yes. Hi, Trisha Dunham, 3574, here on Peak. Um, so on the 5th, you guys had to remove the skate park for safety concerns, which I understand. Um, and I know in the notification that went out to the town, <clears throat> it said that there would be one built in 2018. Um, even on the day that it was removed, there were 30 kids down there to use it. I got texts from my neighbors saying, where'd the skate park go? What happened before the notice came out? So I'm just going to ask that it, if possible, be built sooner in 2018. Then later, it's an amenity that's used frequently from all ages. I see parents out there with their little kids sh showing them how to drop in or just even use, you know, that piece as well as, you know, all ages of kids up through adults. So I'm just asking if that could make it sooner in the year than later because it's certainly missed. Thank you. So just a quick follow up on that item. We did in our budget meeting process, we did ask that that be advanced from several years from now to 2018. And I, I think the goal will be to do it um, as, soon as, as soon as we can. So appreciate the comment. Any additional public comment? So again, thanks for everyone from Coal Creek Crossing and everyone coming down, but especially the big crowd from Coal Creek Crossing. We appreciate you all coming down and uh, appreciate hearing about the issues going on there and I'm confident that uh, with with our town staff and uh, and all the diligent work that will happen there that we'll get you know we'll get those issues resolved um, I think the uh, you know, all, all parties builder town you all everybody wants to work towards that same goal so but appreciate you staying on top of it because a lot of times these things um, you know maybe deadlines get missed and, and people don't come in until after key deadlines so you're you're all really to be commended for staying on top of it and, and really being ahead of the game and not uh, you know not playing catch up like we do sometimes so we definitely appreciate that it, it certainly will make it easier to I think, get things uh, accomplished in a positive way so thank you all right we're on to 
or, and feel free to stick around. We've got more <laughs> exciting stuff. So you're probably thinking, <laughs> you're probably thinking we're done, but no, we're not done. <laughs> you may be done, but we're not done. All right, we've got an uh, update from our Chamber of Commerce director. <laughs> Thank Heather you, Craigbert. Mayor. Um, for all those that are sticking around, these wonderful volunteers are um, obviously public servants, but we welcome anyone from the public to get involved. So thank you. Um, on behalf of the Chamber of Commerce, um, I just wanted to take this moment to invite you to um, what will be a family night at the Sports Table. So we are um, working with the team um, at the Sports Table to put together kind of a, a group ticket price for um, Friday, October 27th. It's a Rough Riders game night. Um, we're starting the um, festivities at Brunelleschi's, the restaurant inside Sports Table at about 6 p.m. Um, tickets uh, will range between $5 and $10 through the chamber. So we're very excited to um, be hosting an event there, try to get some other businesses involved. And as we continue to hear people, um, once you get there, it's well worth it. So we will um, be very excited to be working together with them to host um, a chamber night for the Rough Riders, the local junior hockey team. So anyone is welcome to um, buy tickets through the Chamber of Commerce at superiorchamber.com. Thank Great. You. Thank you for the update. Appreciate it. All right, next on our agenda is the consent agenda, item number 11. We have two items on the consent agenda. Do we have a motion to approve the consent? So moved. Motion by Trustee Laces, second by Trustee Dozal. And all those in favor? All right, thank you. The consent agenda passes unanimously, thank you. All right, next is item number 12, adoption of a resolution approving a construction contract with Nora Concrete Corporation for the McCaslin Boulevard at Snowmass Circle drainage project. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Alex, uh, do you have a presentation? You show, um, this has been an ongoing issue in uh, South Rock Creek that, that staff has had to deal with for over 10 years. Um, so it's at a point where uh, we feel that um, some modifications to the drainage area need to be made so that uh, we can uh, stabilize the trail system through there, which gets used quite extensively and, and uh, help with some of the drainage issues in that area. Alex? Yeah, as Matt said, uh, it's a longstanding problem. Uh, we do have a ponding problem near some residents uh, because the drainage kind of flows down uh, behind their property. So the purpose of the project is to uh, provide drainage improvements to provide swales and pipes to protect the uh, the trail in that area to take some of the water out of the low spots where it collects and get it to uh, proper detention areas and also to get it down to uh, where it naturally flows down to McCaslin and then into our storm uh, drainage system. We uh, developed design plans and put this out to bid uh, through the uh, Rocky Mountain e-purchasing system Four bids were received, ranging from uh, 141500 to uh, 270000 um, Nora Concrete was uh, the low bidder on the project. They also recently um, did our concrete repair project, and we had um, some very good results in terms of scheduling. Once they came into town, they, they finished off uh, uh, very rapidly, so we're very pleased with their progress. In fact, they're turning back some money to us. Um, so we're pleased that they got the, the low bid, but uh, we did have a, a pretty competitive uh, uh, bids on that. So we're recommending, based on our engineering consultants review of the bids and staff review, that to the award of the contract to uh, for the snow mass drainage improvements to Nora Concrete in the amount of one hundred forty one thousand four hundred ninety dollars. Thank you. Questions from the board. I had one question, but I, I don't think it has an impact, but um, we have talked about traffic calming on McCaslin, mm -hmm. and anything we do here, I couldn't see where if we do some traffic calming on McCaslin, we'd have to undo what we're doing here. Uh, this is quite a ways away from McCaslin, away from the Indiana inter intersection. Mm -hmm. It does, uh, the water does end up in the pipes that go through that, that intersection. And those pipes, you know, could be uh, rerouted depending mm -hmm. on what we do down there. So, um, 
This but is, the majority of the $140,000 worth of work right, is not, is not no, it's further away to the right, east. That's right. Uh, it just ends up going through that intersection, but these are all uh, fairly removed from McCaslin. Okay, thanks. So, having just actually walked Coal Creek Crossing over the weekend, would you mind calling up the, the page of the bid that showed the work that's to be done? And, and describe to us what's happening. Sure. Is it? Do you have it handy here? Just in general terms, I want I want to know what's flowing where, and what we're doing to um, correct any standing problems. Okay. So if you can see that, uh, McCaslin's kind of off on this side of the page in the mm -hmm. Indiana intersection is kind of to the north. This is a uh, snow mass, that snow mass loop. And there's a, a detention pond out here. So this, this area here is where it's a low spot. I mean, this, it becomes very marshy, um, standing water all the time, mosquito breeding uh, area. And then we have a trail Here's the trail that kind of comes behind snow mass, kind of loops around, and then comes up and connects up to the, the trail system at uh, Indiana. So we have a couple places where the, the trail is washing out, where we're gonna put pipes in to prevent that, and then channelize, um, digging several swales to channelize, um, take the drainage and get it to an area where it can flow down to McCaslin. So, this area of McCaslin uh, will be regraded. It's a pretty steep slope. We're going to put some riprap and so forth and provide a good place for it to go. Otherwise, it goes, it's a very steep slope and it goes, the drainage kind of goes down all over the place. We're trying to provide a good channel for that to go down the McCaslin slope. And then also here, we're providing an outlet for uh, water to go both ways to go under the trail over here with a culvert and get into that detention pond. So trying to, this is a pretty uh, steep slope, so we've got a lot of water coming down and, mm -hmm. and collects right here. So we're trying to get it away from the homes and protect the trails. Okay. I have a completely different question. Um, I, and I wasn't able to locate it, but as I look at the construction contract, it seems more abbreviated than previous construction contracts. It doesn't have a section for indemnification doesn't have an insurance section. I know our professional services contracts are longer. Are construction contracts usually absent any indemnification section, indemnification insurance requirements? No, they, those are all in there. They're all in the general conditions, and the general conditions were not included in the board pocket. The general conditions are quite lengthy, but they are in there. Okay. My, so, it, which is fine, uh, but just a statement next time saying that we are general conditions accepted without exception. Thanks. Okay. Okay. Anyone have anything else? Okay. With that, I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion okay. uh, approving Town of Superior Resolution Number R dash. Forty nine series two thousand seventeen resolution of the Board of Trustees of the Town of Superior approving a construction contract with Nora Concrete Construction Corporation for the McCasson Boulevard at Snowmass Circle drainage project. All right, motion by Trustee Laces. Second. Second by Mayor Pro Tem Pennington. And then we'll need a roll call vote. Yes. Folsom? Yes. Hammerley? Yes. Laces? Yes. Pennington? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Thank you. Motion passes unanimously. All right, we're on to item number 13, discussion and consideration of a resolution merging the Parks, Recreation, Open Space, and Trails Advisory Committee, PROSTAC, and the Open Space Advisory Committee, OSAC. Thank you, Mayor. Um, over recent years, there's been some discussions about um, dissolving these two committees and, and creating a new committee 
of, uh, of uh, parks and open space into one committee. The, the, um, the two committees have, at times, um, areas of interest that overlap. Um, it's created confusion at times on um, with committee members and what their responsibilities are in certain areas, such as trails, uh, open space, many amenity prioritization, budget recommendations to the board, et cetera. Um, and at times their mission and goal statements overlap as well. Um, we've included a resolution for the board's discussion and consideration that would dissolve the two committees and combine them into uh, one new committee. Uh, the name of, that's been included in the resolution can be changed based on board's um, direction if you choose to move forward with this issue. As well as how many members are part of the committee, where staff had recommended 13 to start because it's, there's a number of people on the two committees that are still interested. And um, if this were to move forward, um, we would open it up for everyone on the committees to apply for the new committee. Um, from a staff perspective, we're recommending that this um, move forward. Uh, we think it's more efficient and it reduces the miscommunication and confusion at times. Um, and uh, we think it would be um, a positive step for not only staff, the board, but also the committees. Patrick is here. Uh, as well, I think there's members of Open Space and the Parks, Recreation, and Trails Advisory Committee here that I'm sure have comments on it as well. Okay. Yeah, maybe we have some board questions just for clarifying. Then we'll open it up sure. to public comment and uh, allow any of you that would like to speak uh, certainly give you an opportunity to do so. Okay, questions? I would like to ask Kendra to clarify uh, or respond to Gladys is concerned that we can't do this without a uh, referendum. Sure, and, and I did just forward a memo to you that I prepared in November of last year that's a confidential memo, but addressing specifically that issue. And there is no prohibition on you doing this. OSAC has a, an advisory role, um, but that's it. So there's no prohibition about you dissolving OSAC, and you can give the new committee the same advisory role or whatever advisory role you would like. So this decision tonight would not affect the open space tax that was approved by the voters. That would continue to be collected by the town in perpetuity until Correct. the voters did something about it in the future. Correct. Right. And I think it's important to note that the, the uh, language of that ballot issue said nothing about an open space advisory committee. And That's correct. I think there's a mis conception that the ballot language talked about the creation of it and it did not it only talked about the creation of the tax itself and how the tax was the money the revenues were going to be used but nothing about the OSAC as a committee that's exactly right the OSAC committee was formed in 2001 as well but it had again advisory roles and was able to make advisory recommendations but that's it so the tax that was approved was for yeah, I have it here. Mm -hmm. To be used for paying incentives for creating and maintaining additional open space within commercial developments and to create, enhance, or expand buffers between commercial and residential areas or main thoroughfares, thoroughfares and residential areas and to create, enhance, or expand wildlife corridors or any other open space acquisitions and any expenses related thereto for open space to serve the residents of the town of Superior. So it was very broad. But and there's and again there's no mention of the there's no mention of any committee or any advisory committee in that ballot question. But in the bond language there is. But not an o open space advisory committee. That's correct. A, 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 it, just to be clear, people are not imagining things. In the bond language there was reference to a group of residents who would recommend action to the board. That's so correct. um but as I interpret your comments, this can be that same group of residents performing That's that correct. same function. That's correct. So in terms of the number of members, as I add up the number that's on both right now, I come up with 15. 
and not 13. So the question is, do we do we want to potentially not have two current members? And, and my personal view is if we do this, I don't want to exclude anybody that wants to continue serving. So I think we need to um, take that into consideration and you know, perhaps poll, the, I mean, there may be some people that don't want to continue just for whatever reason, and, and 13 may be a great number. But I, I don't want to get into a situation where we're having to turn someone down that has previously been accepted. And then another question kind of somewhat related is this question of term limits and, and how does the term limit clock kind of get reset for all, all new people as they get uh, you know, reappointed to this new, um, you know, to this new group. And I, I guess I don't have particularly strong feelings either way. My, I, I really, term limits on, on volunteer advisory committees don't make a lot of sense at all to me because you're, you're asking people to give their time to do the right thing for the community. I, I understand wanting some, you know, some turnover and some fresh ideas, but I, I think that happens um, naturally. And, and the committees are large enough that they can vote different leadership in if they need it. So I'm, I would, I think it would probably make more sense to just reset the term limit. I mean, if term limits are going to be a thing, and, it, and I think That's they are, then just they it resets. get. It res does automatically. It does okay. Reset. Yeah, okay. It, it resets them automatically language. based on your code. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because it's a new committee. Okay. Then that's yeah. that's probably a good answer to that. Okay. And then the my last question is about the the number of members. So do we do we want to have the initial number of members be higher to capture everyone who wants to participate, but have some kind of language that takes it down to nine as people roll off either they get termed out or they just you know have to resign for you know, personal reasons or, or so on but but get it down to nine to be consistent with the other committees and and with, and with the thinking being that that you know the larger the group the more potentially difficult it is to manage and um, but during that initial phase you don't want to eliminate people who've committed to serve but um, kind of get to that sweet spot of nine perhaps so just to I'll just throw that out as a question more than a opinion, Sandy. So totally agreed. I think um, everybody who is on the separate committees, if they want a spot on this joint committee at first, um, serve is allowed to serve, and then as natural attrition happens, we get down to some number. Um, I would like to hear. We've got some leadership from the existing separate committees. We've got the liaisons from those committees here. I'd like to hear whether or not uh, 9, 11, or 13, um, this committee will have an extra charge for open space that might warrant more people uh, or not. And so I want to hear from uh, these folks to see you know, I, I want to use uh, the experience of uh, CAPS, which is uh, pretty, there's a lot of projects they want to undertake, and frankly, nine isn't enough. <laughs> so it, it having a lot, you know, worked on that for a while now, I'm sort of wishing we had asked for 13 on that committee. We did. We did, and it was packaged, I didn't want to get into that, but it was packaged back into the nine. And 13 would have served the purposes better. So I would like to reserve my personal judgment as what the ultimate end goal might be until I hear from you two and the people in the audience. Well, I want to hear from the OSAC representatives and the ProStack representatives. And, and personally, I, I, I take issue with the way this discussion is going, that it's kind of a foregone con conclusion that this is going to actually pass and that the groups are going to be merged because I want to first hear from OSAC and from ProStack and you know, hear their point of view and see if this is something that actually should happen uh, rather than just assuming that it's something that will happen. Okay, so a couple things. Uh, first, Matt, I'd like to, so I know we have members of the community and I'd love to hear sort of the, if there is an official 
position from both OSAC and PROSAC, and maybe we could hear about that from either you or the leads, but I also kind of as members of the community, maybe there's a difference, right? So what does the committee think versus what do the individuals think might be different things? And so maybe you could help guide us through that. Second, just an observation, I'm not saying that I advocate for this, but the, the voice of the community is not limited by the number of community of residents on a committee, right? And so if any community needs more people, whether or not it's CAPS or anybody else, I think we can put the feelers out and invite our friends and neighbors to help. Um, these are advisory committees. Um, we shouldn't, and anybody, they're public meetings, anybody can attend. And so I'm not advocating for limiting it to nine, but in the event that we do merge, and in the event for some reason this committee or other committees are limited to nine, but there's more people that are interested, again, just because they might not get a front row seat doesn't mean that the voice is not heard. So I wanted to make that what is probably a very obvious statement obvious. So Matt, what could you tell us about the official positions? Do both, I know staff supports the merging of these. What are the committees say about the merging? Well, I, I think, um, Ken, I know Ken's here and Peter was coming, is he here? <laughs> he was coming from the airport, so. I, um, <laughs> here he is. But I think um, uh, Patrick and I had a meeting with Ken and Peter earlier this year and we talked about this issue and the possibilities and and um, uh, I think it might be better to hear from and Peter and Ken and they know their committee they've had the discussions with them and what their perspective is there and then Patrick can also give his perspective from a staff point of view on it okay shall we go ahead and hear from Peter and Ken you guys want to start and then we'd be happy to hear from other committee members as good evening Ken Lish 1326 South Adelia Court OSAC chair um, <clears throat> first uh, just to address trustee Ryan's question our official uh, position um, this has come before the board before our uh, committee even had a chance to discuss it so it's hard for us to have an official position without having a meeting between when this got thrown on the agenda and tonight um, so in essence we have no specific official position on this resolution however after it was discussed uh, with manager Magley uh, we did have a discussion about it on OSAC and there were concerns and it wasn't supported by OSAC and I think this was probably six months ago ish time frame um, but I, to summarize, I, I won't go through every concern that has been discussed, but the ones that I believe uh, are, are the most important, and, and just so you know where I'm coming from, I don't support this resolution. I think OSAC and PROSTAC should stay as separate standing committees. Um, the, <clears throat> the biggest uh, benefit that I'm seeing coming from, from staff's recommendations is that this will streamline the process. Uh, get rid of excessive overlap and make things uh, better for both the committees in the town. Um, I'd like to point out that if you look at the uh, work plans that were provided that were highlighted in yellow showing the correlations, that's a bit misleading. Um, yes, there are correlations between our work plans. Do those correlations come up on a nightly basis when we have our meetings? No, they don't. If you go back to our past six months, uh, which I did earlier this evening and looked at our agendas. Uh, they're all of two items, the, the five-year trails plan and the Boulder County recommendations that overlapped on our uh, work plans. So just because it looks like there's a ton of overlap does not mean that there is. And yes, there will be peaks and valleys. There are times where there's quite a bit of overlap, but the majority of the time I, I like to, to say that's probably not very true. Um, however, even, even addressing where there is overlap, each committee has a different charter. You have insights coming from different directions from each committee. Um, even though there's duplicative items, 
you're going to get a different comment, a different statement, a different perspective from each of these committees, and both are very valuable. I love when ProStat comes to the board and has uh, something that OSAC didn't even consider, and vice versa. You will be losing, in my opinion, uh, that value because now you're joining us into one, and not one group is taking each side into consideration. Now. One of the other concerns that we haven't addressed as a committee, but something that has appeared in, in my eyes over the past month or so, is kind of a conflict of interest um, by pushing these two committees together. Currently, you've got open space, which in summary uh, has stewardship uh, responsibility of looking over the open space funds, trying to give good recommendations on open space purchases. Then you've got ProStack, who also has additional responsibilities for parks and other non-open space related issues. There's been significant talk about uh, borrowing money from this open space fund. OSAG looks at that fund very carefully and watches it very closely throughout the year and wants to make sure that fund remains intact so when the few remaining properties uh, that are available come up for sale or acquisition that we can act on it. ProStack uh, has additional responsibilities and might lead them to other conclusions. For instance, the one loan that's been made so far was for Wildflower Park, something the ProStack worked on for a significant amount of time. OSAC might not necessarily say we would, we would have wanted to go forward with that, whereas ProStack would, might say, yes, we did. Same with Parks 1 and 2. That never actually came to fruition, but that same conflict could occur. The skate park, there's lots of conflicts that could occur, and having these two separate committees helps us avoid these conflicts. And then I, I, this has been very mildly, or has already been kind of addressed, but the biggest concern that uh, did come, I think, out of our earlier conversation six months ago as a committee is eventually it sounds like we're going to lose uh, committee membership worth of 18 people down to whether it's 9, 13, 15, whatever it be. But you're losing community engagement. Um, I know there's been a lot of talk over the past year about how that's really important to this board. So I've, I've got to think that that's something that would raise concerns, at least in my eyes it does. Um, to go to the next step, uh, if against my my recommendations a merger does occur, I would recommend that uh, a transition period be put in place, um, a one-year uh, uh, period where there are co-chairs instead of a chair and a vice chair. Um, my thinking behind this is that that would ensure that both committees uh, and and. I apologize, let me go one step further. The co-chairs, one would come from ProStack and one would come from OSAC. That way both committees' uh, value, initial values and viewpoints are fully taken and there isn't an opportunity for one of the committees to end up overtaking the other's uh, priorities and insights. Um, again, after the first year, you'd go back to the regular chair, vice chair structure, but as a transition, this would allow good balance. Um, beyond that, uh, as Trustee Pennington uh, requested, um, I, I've got serious concerns about all directions. If we drop it down to nine committee members, just as we do with every other committee, then what you're looking at is a lot of work to be done by few people. As I mentioned, there were only two overlapping items in the past six months between each of our committees. I believe our uh, committee meetings averaged about two hours every month. So if we're going to continue doing the good work that each committee has, we're looking at about four-hour meetings spread across nine people and trying to continue to uh, execute on what each committee has uh, focused on will become quite difficult and things will fall to the wayside. However, if you're increasing the committee membership to 13, uh, 15, whatever it may be, it is harder to manage. You've got a lot more viewpoints, which they're all great viewpoints. It would be excellent to hear everybody, but now you're also going to have the problem of hearing everybody out, uh, more vigorous debate, which is good. But again, the meetings will get longer. Meetings will have to get cut, uh, cut short, because we're not going to go to midnight. So again, things will fall by the wayside. The only solution in my eyes to avoiding this is continuing to have the two standing committees. Uh, thank you very much. Thanks, Ken. Peter? Peter Bottomley, ProSec Chair. Um, so in general, I I'm actually am in favor of merging the two committees. Um, the, the overlap of 
the committees that that Ken is mentioning, where where it might seem like it isn't a lot, um, where it is does exist. I feel like right now there's things that uh, ProSAC could take care of in a single meeting. But because we're overlapping with OSAC and we're having to go back and forth and, and deal with, the, with another committee, it gets dragged out to two, three months of meetings. And because of that, it creates just a lot of ineffective or inefficient um, work for, for ProStack. I feel like overall, ProStack's agenda certainly has room to take on some additional, and I'm not trying to say that ProStack is absorbing OSAC, but I'm saying if you look at the two work plans, ProStack's work plan does have room to take on additional responsibilities. Um, and in that sense, uh, the primary one that I see coming from OSAC that would go into a merged committee would be that open space acquisition. That's kind of the one thing that ProStack doesn't really touch right now. And I'm more than confident that a merged committee would be able to do everything that ProStack does, plus the open space acquisition and, and any other more outlier responsibilities that OSAC has that ProStack doesn't overlap with. Um, I do have some concerns, as, as Ken just mentioned, about um, how many committee members would be on a merged committee. Um, I, I completely understand the desire to have that range of voice from the community and that you're not necessarily wanting to lose voices. But at the same time, 13, definitely anything more than 13, it's going to be somewhat inefficient to tackle really big discussion items by that committee. Um, you know, we, for example, had um, a, the Recreation Center discussion in ProSAC's last meeting, only seven members were present. We talked about that one discussion item for two hours. That's an anomaly. I mean, we don't usually discuss a single item for that long. But as an example, I mean, if we had discussed that with 13 members versus seven, it would have gone a lot longer than two hours. So um, there would be definitely a transition period to try to get, you know, how a 13-member committee would work. I think ideally, if you were to start with 13 or 15, you would have a plan over, say, a year or two to get that back down to nine so that it, those meetings run efficiently. Um, one, one concern I did have with what Ken said is um, ProStack has never made a recommendation that open space fund be used for anything. We just never have. That's a staff and a board thing. I think there's a misconception there that, that um, OSAC's responsible for management of the open space fund. Everything I've read, they're not. I mean, they make recommendations for acquisition and, and expenditures that come out of Open Space Fund, but they're not the Open Space Fund Advisory Committee, the Open Space Advisory Committee. The actual fund, the management of that fund is by the board. So I don't think that should really be a concern um, that you're, you know, you're merging the two committees and that somehow that that's going to compromise the Open Space Fund. Um, but beyond that, I mean, I think that it really would streamline s certain things within the within the two committees. Um, there's just some of those concerns about, you know, how you the logistics of how you take the current 15 members and turn that into a merged committee. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Additional comments from others. Corey Oxner, uh, Vice Chair of ProStack. Um, I just, I guess going back, uh, I've been with the committee for a couple of years now, and one of the things that I've really found is the, uh, the Prost Master Plan really had a, a line of all the people that are all supposed to be on the ProStack committee. And it's made up of, you know, parks, open space, trails, and some of the people that were on that and advised to it, what was that, 15 years ago? 
10 years ago on that plan was a advisory committee member from the open space committee also a i think it was a y member there was various different members but really it's bringing together a really holistic view for the whole committee um, for um, for the entire uh, open space trails and really just finding a balance of recreation and opportunities so to me i think it's a an opportunity to provide a single voice from one committee I know that the board gets lots of recommendations from different committees and different views, and if it was one committee, we would be providing that in a single discussion versus having, we've had many meetings where we talk about it and then we're like, well, we gotta wait for OSAC to discuss it and get a combined recommendation for the board. And so that, to me, would streamline some of that. But I do agree that the size of the committee is definitely a potential issue, especially if you're having 13 to 15 members um, but I think uh, all open opinions are good and uh, it would add to the discussion. So maybe 11 is a good balance. I mean, not every meeting is everyone there. So when attendance isn't full, you're still getting a good uh, mix of individuals and opinions and a good conversation. And we can provide that uh, good direction to the board and that's what you're looking for. And uh, I think that, you know, overall, there's still a lot of financials that we make recommendations on we still want to see open space. We want to see good recreation opportunities. But in the end, you know, we prioritize them as a group, and it's really up to the board to make a determination of how and when that money is spent and when that, that can be available. So that's all I have for now. Thanks. Thank you. Additional comments? No? Nope. Okay, you look like you're tempted. Okay, good. All right, additional discussion with the board? Are on YouTube. Oh. Oh. No, Rita, Rita had a comment. And then, oh. and then I just have one comment that um, I think that it seems like we've had quite a focus on the purchase of open space. And uh, I, I, I would like to have us think more about the committee or committees think about how to maintain, manage, and expand the existing open space and the areas within town. So instead of talking about do we buy more open space and keeping a fund of money to purchase more open space, that's not really the focus that I'd like to see the committee thinking about. It's really what the ballot language said. The ballot language said to provide the opportunity and to manage it, maintain it, and expand it but it didn't necessarily say go forth and purchase as much land as you can for open space. And I think that we've got crossed up a little bit in the last few years is that we've been focusing too much from an OSAC perspective on what more land can we buy rather than how can we maintain and manage what we have. And then we've all, I've always had the concern about ProStack has open space in its title. I never could understand why that was. So I'm not opposed to the two committees because I like the number of the larger number of people involved. But I don't think two committees is very effective and efficient because you're kind of are kind of crossing each other in time. So I am one that loves to have larger committees. I never, I, I thought we had recommended 12 or 13 for caps because we knew we were going to need more. I don't have a concern about managing a larger number of committee members. Um, I would like to have a larger, my preference would be to have a larger committee of members that have a more solid, focused, going down a path, understand what you together as one committee would be doing. Um, I want the greatest involvement of the greatest number of people. And if, if we can only do that by keeping the committee separate, I'd be okay with that but I really think it would make more sense to have one committee and get off of this focus of buying more open space because I don't think we're going to be able to have that opportunity. So what we need to think about is how do we use it better? How do we expand it? How do we maintain it? How do we put, put trails through it? How do we do all these kind of things? And, and I would, we need to figure out how to do that more efficiently. Um, and um, again, I think that the more people on a committee that can say, I'm a member of this committee, that's valuable. 
rather than saying I go as a volunteer and I sit with the committee. I like that there's a greater number of people involved, uh, just like when I'm on Dr. Ka, the Denver Regional Council of Government. There's 56 local governments together. It's not always efficient, but it, at least we all feel like we're part of a bigger thing and we move down the path together. And when we make a decision, we come together and make a decision and we go forward. I don't think large committees are a problem. It's, what, it's the focus on the objective, the goal that you have and what you're, what you're trying to do. And I think, again, my last comment, which I've already made three times now, is that we've had too much of a focus on we must, save, we must save the money in order to buy more open space. I don't know that that's going to happen. So we need to kind of expand that view a little bit beyond just buying open space. Okay. Sandy, your remark? I'm afraid that when I speak about this, I'm going to make about nine-tenths of the people in the room frustrated and angry and, um, you know, full disclosure, I was a member of ProStack for five years. So obviously I have a longer term of experience with that committee. Um, what, in, in my opinion, what has happened is that several years ago, one of our advisory committees was encouraged to broaden what it do did. If you go back and you read the minutes of OSAC in 2011, 2012, it seemed like there was a very, it was, first of all, their meetings didn't look like they lasted particularly long, but they were obviously very focused on the preservation and protection of open space in the community. Um, in 2015, OSAC was encouraged to broaden its, what it was doing. And I certainly respect that we want our volunteers to, to feel like they're having a meaningful job. But what concerns me is that at that time, um, that's when we appeared to start having issues between the two committees because we had a whole lot more engagement. Um, we had um, OSAC becoming involved in recreational programs and that's where things started to kind of become a mess. At, you know, the other thing is though, at, at one point when we first established ProStack, there were actually provisions that what we would have two advocates for trails and two advocates for open space and two advocates for recreation. And so in many ways it feels like now we're kind of going back to that because we're going to have the problem of having advocates for open space who would now be on a much larger committee that could actually slow down the work that ProStec's done and vice versa because we'll now have members of who are very versed in our open space issues um, on ProStack. And so I'm concerned that if we merge these two committees and we keep all the members that we're going to have kind of an unwieldy mess because we, we haven't really figured out how we're going to manage this. And to all of a sudden have 15 people in the room feels um, very difficult. When we talked about this at the retreat a week ago, I said, when we come to the meeting, I want to know all the variables that are out there. I want us to make a decision tonight, and I want it to end. When I went out and looked at most of our neighboring communities, most of our neighboring communities have an open space advisory committee that advises on um, the acquisition and pre preservation and then they have a Parks and Rec Committee. So I'm concerned that if we merge this, we're going to create a mess um, because we haven't really thought it through carefully and how it's going to work. So um, if um, the committees remain separate, I would like to see us go back to the original concept of, of um, OSAC that said the committee is charged 
with the task of examining and making recommendations to the Board of Trustees for the preservation of lands in the town for open space purposes. And then it had a variety of factors. And so I would like to see the committee refocus back to what it was. If it did, it would probably not meet, need to meet on a monthly basis. It would only meet quarterly. If we're going to merge these two committees, my recommendation is that we state, yes, we will merge them, but they will not, it will not happen until June of 2018. And in that time, we will figure out how these two committees are going to function effectively. I don't believe that the, the resolution we have is going to solve the problem. Okay, thanks, Mark. Okay, uh, first off, I want to thank uh, Ken and Peter, both of you, for your leadership on both OSAC and ProStack for your comments tonight. Um, you know, our town's a much better town because we've got people like you leading our advisory committees and, and just helping the board with all the decisions that, that we need to make on the issues that are uh, pertinent to your committees. Um, first, I, I have to take issue with, with something that you said, Rita. Um, you said that the problem with OSAC is that it's too focused on acquiring open space. And I just, I couldn't disagree more with that. I, o o OSAC should always be thinking about acquiring open space. If you look at its overview, its mission, and its goals. The mission statement for OSAC is to acquire, conserve, and provide stewardship of natural open space lands and associated resources. And its first goal is to advise the town board regarding acquisition and protection of natural lands and buffers using the open space fund. So to somehow suggest that open space is going astray and, and focusing things on focusing on things that they shouldn't be focused on when they're doing absolutely what their mission statement calls them to do, I just think really does uh, OSAC a disservice. Um, I don't think that ProStack or OSAC have done anything wrong in this entire discussion. I think the, the problem is, is that the board has not been clear in terms of what we actually want ProStack to do and what we want OSAC to do. So. You know, if there's a problem with overlapping uh, mission statements or jurisdictions, that's something that we can clarify. Um, but I, I really take issue with, um, you know, castigating uh, a committee or, or volunteers for, for going astray when, you know, they're, they're doing what they were supposed to do and what their mission statement calls them to do. You know, I have a big problem with turning away volunteers. Um, I don't want anyone to think that they're not welcomed. You know, we've got a great community here with dedicated volunteers who are spending you know, hours of their time every single month uh, helping our town become a better place to live. Uh, so I don't want anyone to feel that they're not welcomed. And I, I'm worried that you know, by, by merging these two committees, that's exactly what's going to happen, that we're going to lose some by attrition. Uh, we're going to lose some by arbitrarily limiting the, the, the number of, of committee members. Um, so, you know, I want us to be really careful, and I don't want anyone to feel that they're not welcome. I'm concerned that, you know, we've got some, some really big ticket items coming down the pike uh, that are really within ProStack's domain in 2018, uh, talking about a rec center ballot initiative in 2018, talking about parks one and two, talking about the skate park. I'm worried that if all of a sudden open space now is part of their domain, you know, are they really going to have the, the means to you know, effectively handle all of that? Or is it wiser to just continue to have the two committees um, you know, continue on uh, with, their, with their own mandates? You know, however, one, one problem that I do see as kind of the elephant in the room here is you know, we have an open space tax that we're <coughs> going to be collecting in perpetuity. And the problem is, we're collecting it in perpetuity, but we have no open space to buy. So, you know, the real question in my mind is, you know, should we be collecting a tax for a purpose that we can't deliver on? Is that fair to the residents here in town? Is that fair to the people who shop, you know, in Superior, that we're collecting 0.3% of our sales tax and we're amassing it in a, in a slush fund that we can't deploy? I mean, it would be great if we could go out and, and acquire, but we're a town of four square miles limited open space it's getting even more limited and if we don't have a willing and able 
uh, seller who's willing to sell that open space to us, what's the point of us collecting this fund? And you know, I, I, I think that um, you know, Ken raised a good point that it is a, a little disingenuous for us to be funding non-open space acquisitions out of that fund. Um, it's not, you know, I don't, I don't necessarily have a problem with what the board has done in the past, but I don't think it should be a regular, you know, pattern and practice that we use this as just a slush fund that we can use to do whatever else we want to do in town because there's no open space for us to buy. But that said, if there's no open space for us to buy, and if there never will be any open space for us to buy, why are we collecting this tax? It's, it's not a discussion for us to have tonight, but I think it's the elephant in the room that we should be discussing in the future because that to me would solve everything. So I'm all for process improvement, I'm all for, for efficiencies, but um, you know, I, at this point in time, you know, I, I, I feel like ProStack is busy enough with the things that they have on their plate and OSAC <coughs> has a mandate and uh, I don't want our volunteers to feel like they're not welcome. So those are my thoughts. Sandy. Um, yeah, I, I'm not liking a lot of the stuff I've heard here either uh, tonight. There is a purpose for open space, and if we go to the bond funding, they do have a, uh, a, a citizen responsibility to opine and recommend to the board uh, how open space bond funds were um, spent. And I do believe you, one could make a strong case that while that was not articulated in the tax referendum, the attitude of the board in this community is that that same group of people, citizens asked to opine on bonds, would therefore opine on tax money. And let's say neither of these said anything about that. The fact is we as a community have resident groups opining on things very important to this town. So even if we didn't have any language in the referenda, I do believe we would have put together a group of residents to opine on open space acquisition. It was so dang important and definitional to this community, we would have had it. So now we have it. And the fact is, the as most of that open space has been bought up, I have to say I have admired this group. I was the liaison for four years. I have admired this group and the internal discussions they've had about we have very little open space to potentially acquire and we have a large, large fund of money. So how can we use this to the town's best interest? And therefore they came up with the idea, which I fully support, of freeing up some of that open space money to focus on trails that connect interior uh, trails with open space trails. So it's a whole issue of co connectivity and uh, I, I don't know if that was 2014 or 2015 or 2016, but uh, $600,000 was freed up by open space committee for that con connectivity. And this is when you started having cross purposes of the committees because in ProStax charter it says trails and oh by the way the open space committee was making a bunch of money available from the open space fund for trails therefore they had every right to have an opinion on which trails to prioritize and that's when and I believe in the utmost of efficiency these two groups were asked to work together to bring a priority list to the board. And they did that beautifully, and those are in the process of being connected, and some have been finished, et cetera. So this overlap shouldn't be disdained. It should be appreciated for why 
it took place. Now, is sometimes this a little challenging? Yes. Is sometimes it a little inefficient? Yes. But um, I want people to understand how that evolution, it wasn't overreach by OSAC. It was actually a, 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 a what I think is in the best interest of the community uh, in, in saying we've got six million dollars, how do we not let it just set stagnant, but how do we make it, uh, use it productively for, for building out this town. So I, I can't stress enough how important that is to be put in your, your collective memories as to why that happened. Um, So, um, if I were to do a merged committee in a perfect world, I would probably ask that it be returned to more of the, 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 the structure that uh, Sandy alluded to in her comments, where this, uh, this combined committee might be 13 people three of whom still have responsibility for open space, three of whom have responsibility for parks, three of whom have responsible for indoor slash rec, and three of whom have responsibility for trails. Having attended a lot of post-act meetings, having been liaison, each of those areas is very important and those subgroups would report to the full group as necessary and as managed by the chair and then the staff liaison. So I can see it working uh, well um, with good faith uh, in a transition period. And I did like Ken's recommendation that if this were to happen, we have a transition period of a year in which you have co-chairs from uh, representing each committee to assure that this transition takes uh, place with the best interests of both committees in mind and then after a year it, it goes to another structure because by I mean uh, it goes to the the chair and the, the sub chair because by that time you will have allowed this forged group to gain trust in each other gain a working relationship with each other so I see that work um, uh, but I have to say, I could also be convinced tonight to keep them separate. I, I uh, have listened to what various people discussing the benefits of that have said, and I, I could be convinced about that. But I, I, I likewise, um, um, you know, wanted to clear the air as, as Mark had and, and give a little bit of perspective here. Kevin. Um, perspective. Uh, so, communities all over America tonight talking about gun control, opiate abuse, financial distress. We're, we're talking about how to improve the value of our citizens. So, this is a really good problem we have, and, and I want to be really careful with the language we use because, you know, I, I don't think anybody is castigating any, any members of the community. and. So I like that you finish with perspective, Sandy, because I just want to add that perspective. This is a really good problem. I mean, it's a problem, um, but it's a good problem. And second, I, I'm really thankful that we're discussing this tonight. Um, I've complained to Clint uh, and to Matt a few times that uh, this is on the agenda too often. So um, I'd like to see this resolved tonight. Uh, one way or another and then we'll put it to bed maybe until next October and then decide again whether or not we have the right committee structure. Uh, now, in the event if we do merge, um, with regard to the numbers of members of the committee, I, I sit on a lot of committees, I go to a lot of meetings. Um, I disagree. I don't think that you could be very effective with too many people and while we heard from the chairs uh, a different perspective, one thing that they did agree on was caution to have too many people sitting on the committee. Um, I don't think any member of the committee is defined by being a member of their committee. I think you're defined by your families and your work and you're proud of a number of things and being on our committee is just one thing. 
If you're looking for other volunteer opportunities, there are plenty in this town. Heather, I know, would love help with her next event. Uh, the library would love readers. Matt would love people to help in any other way. Just because you are not necessarily on a committee doesn't mean that you cannot volunteer. And so if we merge, I'm not necessarily personally supportive of a transition or having too many people. I don't think, I don't know if nine's the magic number, but uh, I know 18 is far exceeding a magic number. Um, with regard to the collection of the open space tax in perpetuity and whether or not that's appropriate, super interesting. I want to be careful about what we noticed for the meeting and that feels way out of scope. Um, I would argue that we have hardly defined a slush fund. Uh, I save for retirement. I hope other people save for retirement. I don't think that's a slush fund. I've borrowed from my 401k once or twice in the event of an emergency and or a need, and I paid it back. I think there was the, the previous board made that decision. It was a properly noticed decision. It was well discussed, um, and, it was, and it was done. And I don't think we have seen, I don't, we haven't heard from members of the community that there is continued abuse. That was the only time that I'm aware of. Um, and so I just don't think that is a slush fund. And knowing how hard my colleagues work, don't think there is any risk of that being a slush fund. As a rule, I accept the advice of committees. We do not have unilateral advice here. Um, so I have not heard from Ken that he thinks this is a good idea to merge these committees. And so while I'd, I'm all for administrative efficiencies and, and I beat up Matt to try to be more efficient and have his staff be more efficient, I go back to my rule of taking the advice from committees. And uh, since we have not heard from OSAC that this is a, a good idea this year, um, I think we need to keep it separate but I certainly agree that the goals of the committee need to be clarified, and that's the job of this board, and we accept. Okay, other comments? I just have a, a, a couple additional points. So open space is one of the reasons why Boulder County, the town of Superior is consistently ranked as one of the top places to live, right? We've made it a priority. The voters have passed the 0.3% sales tax so we can acquire more open space. It's one of the reasons why we're the best, one of the best places to live. They're not making more of it. And once, once it's gone, it's gone. So, you know, I'm, I'm worried about, you know, we talk about unintended consequences here in, in the decisions that we make here on the board. And I'm worried about an unintended consequence here. You know, we're thinking about process improvement. We're thinking about efficiency. What's the unintended consequence of, of dissolving a committee that's specifically designated to consider open space issues? I, I no doubt believe that you know, the volunteers who would serve on a merged committee would do a fantastic job, right? Our ProStack volunteers do a fantastic job. Our OSAC volunteers do a fantastic job. I am concerned, though, with you know, the amount that's on ProStack's plate right now that OSAC is going to play that, that open space is going to play second fiddle to parks and rec issues. I just I think it's necessarily going to have to. Um, so, you know, with that said, you know I just urge caution here, and I know that the board will make the right decision. Okay, I'm beginning to hear that we've kind of stated various positions. Anybody else have any anything? I I guess. It, Maybe I've, I've stated some questions. I don't know that I stated my position. I, I support the resolution. I think that it makes sense to, just to have everyone in the same room. I, I just for the reasons of efficiency, I think we're, we're, we all live in the same community. We all have the same goals. And the idea of having two groups in two different rooms talking about overlapping things, it, it's just never made sense to me. So I... I would like to see everybody in the same room. I hear the comment or I hear the concerns that uh, my fellow board members have, and I respect those. Um, but to me, the, the overriding 
thing that I would like to see is everybody in the same room. But from what I'm hearing, I don't know that that's necessarily the highest priority. Others? Final comments and let's put it to a vote and put it to a rest. Yeah, I think we need to be, during the vote, we need to be really careful about if anybody has a resolution that it has the number of members on the committee. So, so if anybody feels that, that we're going to transition, that may... We have to make that clear. Right, have to make that clear because that may sway somebody's decision here, right? So, so Kevin, how would you suggest that be handled? Can I make a point of order? Good Lord, I have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> can I make a point of order? Yeah. We don't have to take any action on this. We can just move on. And I think that would be more appropriate after the discussion rather than trying to create a resolution that may seem appropriate and then have it voted down anyway. So if, if the general view is that we don't want to vote on this, we can just let it die. That's another option. Sure. And I think, okay. Mr. Mayor, mm -hmm. I, would, I would ask if that's what you prefer to do. I would support that as well. Okay. So, okay. Any further discussion? I think the only comment I would make is we do have issues with overlap on these two committees. And I really believe that we need to, if nothing else, hear from our town staff, where is this overlap occurring and how do we fix it? Um, you know, I am read back through the minutes and I'm, I remember that OSAC made a recommendation several years ago on advancing OSAC monies in order to make trail connections. At this point, I don't even know whether those trail connections actually have it. Um, I, don't, I don't think they did. Some of them may have. But I don't remember whether those trail connections were actually within ProStack's parameter or whatever. So anyway, I guess for me, what I would like to see happen is if OSAC recommends that there are, you know, they made this recommendation. If ProStack doesn't really agree with that and they're within natural, in organized open space, then we got to figure out a way to deal with these confusions. And so I really think we have to deal with the issue of the overlap between the two committees because it does take up, I mean, all respect to you, Ken, it is delaying the progress of both committees because they both got to grapple with it. And so, um, you know, I, I think the board has got to, to figure this out for these two committees because it's impossible for them to figure it out themselves. So maybe we need to get a recommendation from staff on if the two committees are going to continue to exist, how do we clarify the roles between the two of them? Um, it seemed that originally to me open space was very clear but now it's become broader. And, um, you know, I don't want this to come back to the board again in my lifetime, but I think in order for that to not happen, we have got to clarify these two committees because it's pretty clear in some of our other jurisdictions around us. So um, if it dies, we still got to figure this problem out. And it's not fair to kick it back to the two committees. But it's, it's going to come back to the board if we don't decide on it tonight. I'm I'm not saying we have to do it tonight, but if we don't do it tonight, at the next meeting, we have got to resolve this. Sandy. So, Matt, could you uh, give us progress on that, the $600,000? Some of, some of the trails um, were constructed, like the one down by the 15 acres that the town owns. Some, some did not move forward after, I think, some of the committees received community feedback. Mm -hmm. um, so that's right. where we were at with those. What I want to say, uh, obviously, when ProStack has open space in its name and you have open space advisory committee, that is obviously something that needs to be clarified in a manner or removed from ProStack and put totally over to OSAC. But the reason it exists, uh, as I understand it, is one is uh, uh, 
well, I'm gonna let Peter, I'm gonna get this all confused. But anyway, that is the obvious um, overlap that uh, I think the board can address pretty easily. And then um, uh, the trail connections that connect the two are an obvious area of overlap. And I don't think we need to seek perfection in which this is crystal clear and this is crystal clear because the fact is the situation overlaps. So if I have to go through a couple of uh, meetings to uh, have uh, OSEC recommend and ProStack opine or vice versa, I don't care. It's, it's like uh, sometimes people tell me, you seven up there just argue all the time. Why don't you agree? I said, you want us to argue. Because when you argue, you get all the viewpoints out and hopefully the better decision results, right? So if they have to go back and talk this through and then bring a collective recommendation to the board, I thought that was beautifully executed. And I don't want anybody to under think that it was, it was a faulty execution. Yeah, it took a little more time and more committee me meetings, but the end result was exactly as desired, where they had to coalesce as two committees on a recommendation to the board, and the board approved it. And, and it was very, very clean. Uh, so I, I uh, think sometimes uh, cut and dried is a little bit overrated. I, I think sometimes messy actually yields better results. Um, I am happy to vote on this tonight, and I'm happy not to vote on it tonight and let it uh, just die um, a natural death. Um, so. Uh, like the majority, I mean, if there are people well, who struggling with it. Let me it. just suggest that I, I like the idea of not voting. Uh, well, I did say I wanted a decision tonight. A, a, decision. a not yes. vote is a, to me a decision, a decision. and decision. what that means to me is um, two things. That um, my commitment to work hard on the work plans and try to resolve uh, where those conflicts exist and I do agree with Sandy, sometimes, you know, messy is good, right? It sort of gets you in there, but that's my commitment, and I think everybody else's commitment. And number two, that um, we could all uh, agree on this path, and then if we screwed it up, we'll fix it next October. Um, but let's just agree, so if, but that's what I mean when I say um, to not vote, which is, you know, that doesn't mean that we'll never look at this again for the rest of the term, this means until you know, this feels like the season to look at the committee structure and to work through the work plan. So those are, you know, sort of two things that I yeah. mean when I say no vote. Yeah, I mean, a, a pulling it for not voting on it is, is in fact a decision. And I, I think if the one good thing that's come out of this is we've really opened up the, the door to further discussions, as Sandy put on, uh, uh, in terms of really fine-tuning the work plans and, and trying to eliminate this conflict. And if we can do that, then we've really that's that's really what we were trying to accomplish I think by the by the combination but if we can do it by other means so be it so all right anything further on this okay well that concludes our regular meeting agenda we do have an executive session which means that um, the gallery will need to clear so so thank you all for coming appreciate your interest in this topic.